Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Tuesday, September 26th, 2023, and today we are going to be talking about the 2024 New Hampshire GOP primary. And Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina and former UN ambassador under President Donald Trump's administration, and her surge and her rise to second place in the New Hampshire primary. Now, Nikki Haley for a long time has seen has been seen as this very strong GOP candidate, but somebody who has been unable to make major headways when it comes down to the GOP nomination polls on the national level. When you take a look at where she is, she's in third place nationwide, but just at 5.4% across the United States. She's compared to Vivek Ramaswamy, who's at 5%, to Vice President Mike Pence, who's at 4%, whereas Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis are the only two candidates in double digits, with Donald Trump with the clear advantage. But in New Hampshire, the state is very, very different. For a long time, Ron DeSantis was practically very close compared to where he is now with President Trump and was in that high second place position. For a long period of time, Nikki Haley stayed in third, fourth, fifth place when it came down to the New Hampshire primary. But as I was saying, and as is described, this lead in New Hampshire is absolutely a surge. You can see that just three weeks ago, two weeks ago, she was below 6% in terms of support in the state, roughly below 5%. Then it rose all the way, it was up to 7%. Then it was 7.2%, 8.3%, 9.7%, 11%. And now today she stands with 14 points, with Ron DeSantis now dwindling to fourth place. Now, Nikki Haley is the primary focus of this video because she is the reason that Ron DeSantis has plummeted in the polls. But for the remainder of the video, we are also going to be talking about Ron DeSantis because it is really important that in the early primary races, as a major contender, you are performing well. But it is clear, following the debate, following Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley fighting off against each other in the first GOP debate, she is on the rise. Ron DeSantis, on the other hand, still seems to be dwindling. In the New Hampshire primary, a report from just today finds that Ron DeSantis dropped to third place in the GOP primary race. But this is just a singular poll. You also see that people are describing his campaign as on life support in New Hampshire as he plummets in poll after poll. And as we've seen now on the New Hampshire wide level, Nikki Haley at 14% to Ron DeSantis' single digits performance in New Hampshire is abysmal. And the fact remains, we are ignoring the one candidate in between the two, and that is former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, who in two of the polls we see here from CNN and the University of New Hampshire and Insider Advantage is beating Ron DeSantis amongst the New Hampshire electorate as someone who nationally is polling at just 2.9%, is doing much better than anyone could have expected in one of the most important races of this primary season. So looking at where New Hampshire is compared to the national level, this doesn't matter as much as the rest of the elections. But because it is so early on in the primary season, it might allow certain candidates to remain longer in the race and push others out. For instance, even though Chris Christie is performing worse than, let's say, Mike Pence on the national level, if Iowa is abysmal for Mike Pence and okay for Chris Christie, but New Hampshire puts him in third place, whereas Mike Pence is at just 1.3% across the state, which will put him not at first, not second, not third, not fourth, not fifth, not sixth, not seventh, but eighth place in New Hampshire, there will be more pressure on him to drop out. Because not only does New Hampshire matter because it's an early state, it also helps build momentum and helps halt campaigns from proceeding, even if they have more support nationally, which even at that point is just 4.4%. As the race starts to dwindle, as the race starts to consolidate, more people will be obliged to go to other candidates. But one person in specific who needs that support, who just simply isn't getting it, is Governor Ron DeSantis. Now, another reason why I thought this video was worth making was because the state of New Hampshire has a very interesting relationship with Ron DeSantis. Putting aside Nikki Haley's recent surge, when it comes down to New Hampshire politics, Ron DeSantis was always meant to be the it guy in New Hampshire. When he was losing in the states of Nevada and South Carolina and Iowa, the DeSantis campaign became very public in that they were going to go ahead and move over to the state of New Hampshire. And that's because a lot of the data seemed to indicate that for a while, Ron DeSantis had a very reasonable shot at winning in the state of New Hampshire. When you take a look at this insider uh, Business Insider article from January 28th, 2023, 
this wasn't a spoof poll. This was the University of New Hampshire, which is a reputable uh, polling institute. It is a university. They host their and hold their own uh, polls within the state, and they're typically pretty accurate. And they had Donald Trump leading for a while, but then after the 2022 midterms, Ron DeSantis took a 12-point lead over Donald Trump in this head-to-head matchup. It was 43 to 31, somewhere along those lines. But the main takeaway was that Ron DeSantis was on track to win New Hampshire had the election been held then. Remember this, the University of New Hampshire are the ones who had this poll 42 to 30%. University of New Hampshire are the same ones today that show Ron DeSantis at just 10% and in fourth place, fifth place actually, statewide. Now on average, he's at fourth place. But the University of New Hampshire, the one-time institute that showed Ron DeSantis with this 12-point advantage, putting him in fifth place, goes to show how far he has fallen. Now, this isn't to say that it's not recoverable to some extent. I certainly think that the national numbers hold precedence over almost everything. And Iowa right now has Ron DeSantis in second place. Nevada right now has Ron DeSantis in a very, very good position at 22%, 21%. But these polls are pretty outdated. What I take away from this New Hampshire poll is that it is true. DeSantis' campaign is on life support in New Hampshire, but they've been on life support in every single state, especially some of the early ones. South Carolina in specific, we see here that Nikki Haley is in second place. DeSantis and Scott are tied for third and fourth place. This is not where you want to be as the second place candidate, but I think it's a combination of bad factors. New Hampshire has never really been a fan of candidates like DeSantis. The more that they see him, the less they like him. South Carolina is where both Tim Scott and Nikki Haley are from. Nikki Haley is the governor, uh, Tim Scott as the senator. So very visible members within South Carolina politics. It just so happens to be some of the most important states in this primary process. Now, as we head into the September debate in just tomorrow, actually, which is crazy to think about, tomorrow will be the second uh, GOP primary debate. Nikki Haley will be on this debate stage. Ron DeSantis will be on this debate stage. Tim Scott will be on this debate stage. Everyone here will be on this debate stage. Governor Doug Burgum, Governor Chris Christie, Governor Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, Vice President Mike Pence, Vivek Ramaswamy, Senator Tim Scott. These candidates will be battling it out again. The only person dropping from this list is Governor Asa Hutchinson from the state of Arkansas. But as we see, a very, very similar matchup, and if the results are anything similar, Nikki Haley might yet again see an additional bump. And for Ron DeSantis, who saw no bump from the debate, will start to dwindle even further. The whole idea that it's waiting for DeSantis, DeSantis is ready to strike. Sure, he's seen some slight uptick when it comes down to national polls, from his low point at 12.4% today at 14.5%. It's a two-point difference, which really doesn't make much of a change. Vivek Ramaswamy has certainly seen a dwindling in support, but again, marginal, 8% down to 5%. Nothing significant enough that I would say it's career-ending or career-boosting for any of these candidates. But these early primary states certainly could shape that, because national numbers are just national numbers, but elections are elections. We all remember the momentum that was built up after South Carolina in the 2020 Democratic primary for Vice President Joe Biden, how it completely turned around a race where he got you know, fourth, fifth place in Iowa, fifth place in New Hampshire, second place in Nevada, but then a boom, landslide victory in South Carolina in 2020. Everybody dropped out, consolidated around the centrist candidate, that being, uh, at the time, Vice President Joe Biden, and he won the nomination off of that energy. That is what could happen here in the event that Donald Trump is not in the race, or there could be a formidable Donald Trump opponent should everybody consolidate around one candidate. Because the math speaks for itself. Donald Trump is very much on track to win the nomination with or without the support of any other candidate's group of people. But the combined vote share here would give the race about a 20 to 30 point narrowing, a narrowing that would be necessary to even indicate in any sense that this race is competitive. What I mean by that is you take Vice President Mike Pence, take him out of the race. Senator Tim Scott, take him out of the race. Governor Chris Christie, take him out allocate all his support to Ron DeSantis. Well, that boosts him up to 20-25%. Then you take out Vivek Ramaswamy, 30%. Nikki Haley, an additional 5%, 35%. You start to see how 57 to 35 is nowhere near to what might be the results of 57 to 145 and everyone else in single digits. But it is a problem because Ron DeSantis isn't who people want to consolidate around because of these articles, because of the narrative that is being pushed by the media, a very true narrative, not one that I think is trying to spin things in any way, 
The fact of the matter is, Ron DeSantis has come a very long way, but very, very, uh, it has gone very, very poorly. His campaign has gone from, you know, the Beast Slayer, the Titan Slayer. He was going to be the one to take on Donald Trump, and today he stands, according to the University of New Hampshire, at fifth place nationwide, and on average, losing to Donald Trump, makes sense, losing to Nikki Haley, and losing to Chris Christie. I think it also is just a bit of a uh, shock factor, too, that Chris Christie, of all people, is in third place. Because for the rest of these candidates, they have been pretty universally well-liked. In some cases, by the you know national numbers, we can see here that the highest net favorability, you have Donald Trump at plus, 40, uh, plus 54, Ron DeSantis plus 45, Vivek Ramaswamy plus 35, Mike Pence, on the other hand, down by six. And when you take a look, too, I mean, they don't have the, the numbers here um, that we could go ahead and take a look at. Maybe they do all the way down in the, uh, the metrics here. Let's see if we can find Chris Christie, negative 37%. The fact that someone with the worst approval rating, I kid you not, the worst approval rating amongst the Republican Party is somehow above somebody with the second highest net favorability amongst Republicans is a problem in and of itself, right? That is something that he will have to unpack. Because if Ron DeSantis loses to Chris Christie, he's losing to one of the most hated members of the national GOP, one of the most, you know, poorly respected one of the most well, well, well attacked, for the right reason, I think, for a lot of Republicans, because they see his scandals and they say, why would we ever want you as president? Well, clearly, the New Hampshire Republican delegation wants him more than Ron DeSantis, even if so slightly. And seeing the average here again, so shocking about Chris Christie. We're going to move on from him. But I think, to me, that is what really took me back. Not that Nikki Haley, after a phenomenal debate performance, was doing a lot better than she was before, but that Chris Christie put him in his place. And that in some polls, Vivek Ramaswamy was in second place, defeating Nikki Haley, defeating Chris Christie, defeating Ron DeSantis. And again, same people who at one point had Ron DeSantis up by 12. I don't doubt these numbers. I don't think they were wrong at the time. You take a look at the national polling uh, from the GOP primary back during that time frame, January 12th time. You can see actually when was this article written. We'll go to that exact date, January 28th. On January 28th, Donald Trump had 43.5% of the vote. Ron DeSantis had 355 so you're talking about a difference here of less than 10 points between the two. Today, that difference is well over 40 points. That's bad. That's very, very bad. And we can see that. And we can see that Ron DeSantis' campaign has nearly completely collapsed. So where are the steps in moving forward for Ron DeSantis? There's been a lot of calls on him, honestly speaking, to drop out of the race. I don't think that's going to happen. He has too many people backing him. He's the closest person when it comes down to polls. But he needs more support. He needs to change the game quite substantially. And I don't know if that's going to happen. Now, what I am interested to see is how this next debate will shape up, because as the New York Times article suggests, she is becoming a likely target. Nikki Haley is becoming a likely target for many mainstream Republicans, and that's because they saw how well she was able to turn a good debate performance into translatable benefits in the election. Translatable numbers, increased fundraising, increased polling, increased campaign staff, increased support and favorability for Nikki Haley following these debates, something that Ron DeSantis simply did not benefit from. So this next debate, what if Ron DeSantis has his Nikki Haley moment? What if Ron DeSantis all of a sudden comes out and starts to lead by a substantial amount because of his debate performance? Now, we have to keep in mind and caution in saying that Donald Trump still has a very, very loyal following, a very loyal base of support that does not seem to waver even if he does not attend the debate. But it's about those straggling voters who are caught in between the remaining 11, 12 candidates, which is narrowing down to six or seven. And they're starting to say, okay, we're getting closer to primary season. We need somebody to support. For some of them, it's moving to Nikki Haley. But for a lot of them, they're holding out for Ron DeSantis. But I don't know how long they're going to hold out for. Ron DeSantis is at a crucial moment in his campaign. He can either define and consolidate the base on the anti-Trump side, or he can lose it all. Because since that last debate, his numbers have not improved. In fact, they have decreased, unlike practically every other candidate in the race. I'm interested to see where Nikki Haley will be standing on the debate stage. It's very possible. She's right next to Ron DeSantis, which will make for a very, very interesting relationship between the two. I think it could spur some very big arguments and attacks on one another. But that's the nature of a GOP primary debate. That's the nature of any party's primary debate. All of them want to be each other all at once and win that general election against President Joe Biden. The question is now, where do the early states stand? Where does Ron DeSantis stand, and where do the rest of them stand, both literally on that debate stage 
and nationally in terms of polling numbers. Because right now, it's not looking so good for Ron DeSantis, who at one point was meant to be that supposed next GOP nominee. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2024 Republican primary election analysis videos. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.